It's the Hot Stove presented by the Cup of Mets podcast. I'm Ian Bosniak, joined alongside by Matthew DeSantis, as always. Just a reminder before we get going, give us a follow on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. We are at Cup of Mets. Also, be sure to subscribe to the podcast, whether it be on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Lastly, today, we have an exciting announcement. The Cup of Mets podcast is officially partnered with SeatGeek. So be sure to use code Cup of Mets on your first purchase. And with that, Matt, obviously that's an exciting little tidbit. We're now uh, partnered with SeatGeek. Aside from that, brother, how how you doing? I'm good. I mean, seeing you uh, text us that that all went through and we got approved. That was great, man. It's awesome. Big things coming for the for the podcast and for the group. So, hundred percent good. Uh, good. Uh, good to see progress. Hell yeah! So everyone, go ahead, download SeatGeek if you don't have it already. Use it exactly. as an alternative to StubHub. And take a master and the whole nine. And again, punch in that code, I, cup of Mets. I've used SeatGeek many times. I've had not one issue with them. I love SeatGeek. Same. No, I actually, I used them for, uh, Rob and I used them when we had, when we went down to Miami last year um, oh, for cool. opening day. Um, we used them as the second option because StubHub messed us up at first. So uh, SeatGeek came to the rescue and uh, now you know, we're going to help out each other a little bit. So again, be sure to download the SeatGeek app. But with that being said, you know, again, the 15th episode of the Hot Stove, it's winding down. Uh, we have a few tidbits to go over, and then we are going to touch upon our top second baseman and shortstops heading into the 2024 campaign. As last episode, we revealed our top catchers and our top first baseman. But before we get going, you know, a question that uh, I posed to Rob earlier in the week, Matt. Um, and I also posed it on Instagram as well. So, and something that we frequently talk about here on the pod, do the Mets need another bat? Obviously it's going to be at DH, but who are they going to get? We spoke about Justin Turner forever. Spoke about Jorge Soler forever, this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. It seemed like, you know, reports came out late last week until over the weekend that the Mets were going to go internal at DH. Then reports leaked earlier this week that the Mets have remained in contact with J.D. Martinez. Nowhere near a deal, but the Mets are definitely in on Martinez if the price is right. A, do you think this gets done? B, what type of edge will you say would Martinez give the Mets um, opposed to a Vientos? I mean, right now, I think the big thing is Vientos is a question mark coming into the spring training into the 2024 season. Martinez would give you uh, reliability, durability, and you know what you're getting with him. You're probably getting at least 30 home runs, 80 RBIs, give or take. Um, now, getting into the financials of it, I don't think that they're going to do it considering that – one year of J.D. Martinez after you slap on the 30% tax is like $30 million for yeah. one year. So then it really starts It starts to trickle down to uh, front office and what Stearns wants to do. But, I mean, what is it? How many days are we away? Five. Catch. five. We're, five we're five days away. There's still a bunch of big fish on the board. Matt uh, Chapman still there. So you, you still got Snell out there, Montgomery out there. Whole crop. If they're going to spend $20 million, honestly, I would rather just do a one-year deal with Montgomery. But See, now, what do, what do we think that Martinez realistically is going to get, though? Because we were talking about Justin Turner getting 18 to $20 million. That's what he was asking. That's what reports were saying that he was probably going to get. And then he wound up getting $14 million from the Blue Jays. So. Yeah. You know, do we think Martinez's price tag will drop? I think the Mets could possibly get him at like $15 million. But again, with this tax slapped on, as you mentioned, is it worth the $30 million? Yeah. I I I, I don't know. Again, that would just go against and 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 hit Cohen's tax bill. But to me, it comes down to how realistic do the Mets see their chances of being in 2024? Because obviously Vientos, massive question mark, but J.D. Martinez, as you mentioned, does give you that guy who you know is going to be there and has done it before, right? And last year with the Dodgers, he showed no signs of slowing down, right? He, yeah. he, hit, he hit 33 home runs, 
in 113 games, 271, 135 weighted runs created plus and a 2.2 uh, war as a DH, right? So um, you have to look. He also drove in over 100 runs. You know, something that I think is also being miscued when you're looking at, let's say, a Viento as opposed to, um, you know, Martinez. There was a graphic that came about. I don't know. I think it may have been SNY who put it up. But there was a graphic that came out and showed Zip's proje projections going into 2024, and they were very similar. It had Vientos hitting 20 home runs, Martinez 22, Ribby's only maybe like a seven RBI difference between the two, um, and it showed Vientos posting a 1.7 WAR opposed to a 0.7 WAR from Martinez. I think that when you're looking at projections, projections are really tricky because when you take a glance at maybe steamers projections or fan graphs projections or the bats projections, they all have the edge for JD Martinez over Mark Vientos. And I think that to me, I'm looking at this Mets team now and saying, we've got a real solid bullpen and we have a solid bullpen that may be able to help out a question mark of a pitching staff. Then you look at the offense and the offense may need one more established bat to really do some damage. And when I think like that, I say maybe the thirty million is worth it for one year. Yeah, I mean, we really don't know. It's all about if they want to spend that spend that money. At this point, I don't think that they're going to. I think that they're going to stick internal so and see what they got. And if they want to go out and spend money next year, and so be it. I also wonder if a Martinez signing now would preclude the Mets from spending that 10 to $15 million that they were going to hold for the trade deadline. I would say probably so. Yeah. And you would obviously think that unless a massive hole was created at some point during the season, you would think that if they were in contention, they would address the pitching staff. So that would obviously cost money. Um, yeah. And you don't want a Martinez signing to preclude the Mets from that. I mean, listen, Vientos isn't isn't any schlep, and he's not projected to, you know, he, he's projected anywhere from 87 to 108 weighted runs created plus. Um, you know, again, as I mentioned, Zips has him hitting 22 home runs with 72 RBIs, 240 average, 304 on base percentage, and a 439 slugging percentage. But then you look at everybody else, and everyone generally has him um, you know, hitting anywhere between 14 and 16 home runs um, in the 220 to 240 batting range. So, again, it, it's it's an interesting situation because then you look at a DJ Stewart and you have to hope that he replicates what he did last year. So, I don't know. To me, I just, I think I'm growing. Rob and I were talking. I don't know about you, Matt, but the moves when they brought in Deekman and Fujinami, it really excited me. Yeah. And for the first time, it was like, hmm, maybe I can see this Mets team potentially, you know, winning, not winning it, uh, not winning at all, let's say, but like putting together a good product on the field. Pakoda came out with their projections and they have the Mets as the third wild card team. Um, so I don't know if I'm just getting more optimistic and it's making me feel like, hey, maybe they should just go sign JD Martinez then. But I don't know. When you're looking at a guy that drove in over 100 runs, hit over 30 home runs last year, did what he did in LA, you yeah. know, I think that that oversees a question mark in a duo of Vientos and DJ Stewart. Yeah. I mean, trust me, if you're, if you're going to upgrade the team, might as well start upgrading the lineup. So, I mean, at this that point, I just, I don't think that they're going to do that. Um, but like you said, about the Deakman and the Fujinami, I mean, worst case scenario, we're we're sending out. We got some nice trade deadline pieces. You're always just thinking to the trade deadline, Maddie. And Bro, I'm a prospect guy. You know that. I I know you are. I know you are. But like, we don't win a championship for for having the best prospects. You know what I mean. So if we want to pull yeah, a twenty, yeah, yeah, if we want to, no. if we if we want to pull a twenty twenty three Arizona Diamondbacks out of our hat, right, and you know, go on a nice little run here in twenty twenty four, I think that. Um, you know, I think I think we should think more that way, Matt. You know what I mean? Because Mets fans were all already we all already think negatively. You know, we already think about the worst. So because we've been through the worst. Yeah. Oh seven, oh eight, oh nine, fifteen. 
Yeah. Last year, everything. Yeah. So, no. I mean, yeah. So, again, we'll we'll see. It, it, we've been talking about another bat for a while. Um, again, a JD Martinez would do would do wonders. And then, you know, according to reports, the Mets are still looking at Gio Urshela. He may have better offers uh, from other teams, but it looks like the Mets and Yankees are both in on him, and he is interested in returning to New York. So we don't know which offer would you know be higher. Um, but I find it interesting that they're still interested in a Gio or a shell. Obviously, it would be for defensive purposes. Um, but I guess a question would still lie if the Mets were to sign J.D. Martinez or a Gio or a shell. What would Mark Vientos's role then be on the team? Would he become a trade piece? Would he go back to – is he in Syracuse? I mean, obviously, he would be in Syracuse. I mean, I hope he's not in Syracuse. I mean, if they sign one of, if they sign one of them – then you have Nervaez, you have Joey Wendell, and you have Tyrone Taylor. That's locked in. I I I feel like they're still looking for a buyer on uh, Nervaez. But then they would just replace him with Nito, you know. So then you still only have one more bench spot. And if you were to sign a a JD Martinez, you know, they'd probably. I mean, either Vientos or Stewart would be in the minor leagues. But I think that Vientos, just given his age, you would stick him there but then he will probably continue to lose stock yeah dude that's not what you want we we need him in the big leagues we need to see what god especially this year yeah i mean i guess in that's it in that in that situation i guess it's more i feel like it's more clear cut now that i'm talking about it and articulating it that if they were to sign jd martinez it would probably be uh DJ Stewart that would get the boot because mm-hmm. then you would be able to have Vientos as a third base option as well if Beatty, you know, flops or, you know, isn't doing well. But then I think if like an Urshela is signed, then you would see Vientos uh sent back to AAA, um, you know, to offer more flexibility to the roster and give the Mets another some more insurance over a third. So um I don't know. I I I personally, if if the, if the Mets miss out on JD Martinez, I'm 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 fine with what we have. Yeah, I don't I don't need I don't need Gio Urshela. It's very important that the Mets this year find find if their answer at third base lies with either Beatty or Vientos. They need they need that answer because if it's if it's not, then I'm sure next off season they that's what they're going to go out and get. Well, we're, they're also missing. You know the guy who we thought was going to start at third base and Ronnie Mauricio. You know, so he's another guy who, you know, didn't even get his chance to, uh, isn't going to get his chance to shine this year. You know, so yeah, that's I, third base is definitely definitely a question mark, and it, it looks like the Mets are just, you know, at, at least looking and and still uh, engaged within the DH and the third base market. So, yeah. I guess we'll see. Just. Like the rest of the hot stove, we'll just see. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. This hot stove, absolutely nothing. What a shitty off season. I know. Hopefully next next year will be better. Hopefully next year will be better, but like, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying because it's it's just you know we've spoken about bats a million times, but now we're five days away from spring training. And, you know, things are coming to fruition. We get word that the Mets are actually going to go internal. And then it's like, oh, no, they're still in contact with J.D. Martinez. So then it's like, all right, opens another can of worms. Let's fucking talk about it again. You yeah. know, so whatever. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. On to, on to other news. Billy Epler is uh, suspended for a year. Yeah, I'm surprised that they didn't, uh, they didn't hit Steve with anything. Thank goodness that they didn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. So perfect. Billy, let, him, let him uh run out his let him uh take out his suspension and then uh bring him back for next season. Billy Epler. <laughs> well, yeah. Billy. Yeah. So MLB uh announced today that they placed uh Billy Epler on its ineligible list through the end of the 2024 World Series, following results of the league's investigation into Epler's misuse of the injured list. Again, it's a one year suspension. Uh through the investigation, MLB determined that Epler improperly assigned players to the injured list during his tenure as Mets GM, fabricated injuries, and submitted false documentation to those ends. He, 
but he fully cooperated, you know, so that's good. Um, yeah. I can I can guarantee you that Tommy Hunter was uh, one of those guys who was oh back spasms. You know, it was it was so funny. You know, whenever a player would get uh-huh. injured, yeah, whenever whenever someone would be coming back from the injured list, you're like you're looking at the roster. Yeah, Tommy Hunter with back spasms. Yeah, uh, it, it was yeah, it was uh, it was always something along those lines. You always so, knew it. So overly fabricated, you can just tell. Oh yeah. The way the Mets are always about their injuries, just you know, it's just not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. The, hopefully, this is just the David Stern's era as a new regime, and you know, I, I feel like Cohen finally play with some of those pieces that were still left over from the Wilpon era. Um, mm-hmm. you know, with David Stern's help in the clean house, so you know, on to on to bigger and better things, and Epler joins i don't even know who else on the ineligible list but yeah is jared is i wonder is jared porter still on that list uh i think i think jared porter is yeah oh, <laughs> oh he joins uh he joins wander franco oh yeah yeah he joins wander franco on the ineligible list and oh and um julio urias Oh yeah, that, dude. He was gonna get paid this off season too. Oh, uh, he was gonna get cash. No, he's not cash. Doing... Cash, dude. I mean, <laughs> Giolito got what, eighteen million bucks, sixteen million bucks. Urias, Urias would have gotten thirty something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy, Dumb. bro. Jerks. We Jerks. saw a lot. Of, we saw some weird shit this off season. Like a team paid somebody who never pitched a game in the United States three hundred and twenty five million. Yeah, and then we got seven hundred million dollar deal with ninety eight percent of it being via deferrals. Yeah, you know? and uh, what a strange host of. Well, I mean, we're just trying to get through this. We're just trying to get through it at this point. You know, it's February. It's over. over. I'm. I'm just. Yeah. You know, and I'm. I'm. I'm just hoping that. I'm just hoping again that they can actually add a bat here and give us one more thing to talk about next week. So we can continue to flow with our top tens as we, you know, finish out this hot stove. Mm-hmm. And, um, that'd be nice. And then before you know it, it'll be, you know, towards the end of March, we'll be back for the beginning of season three and, uh, away, away the 2024 Mets go, which is wild to wild to think, but it couldn't come any faster. Cause um, but I feel like once the Super Bowl's over, it's like officially baseball season. Oh yeah, this Sunday once it strikes Monday at midnight, boom, baseball season. I feel like once the clock strikes zero on the Super- on the game itself, I am uh, it's it's a full go for me. It's yeah, absolute- I feel you. Well, on to our top ten again. Last week we revealed our top ten. Well, Matt did it, Matt was working or doing something what were you doing matt you were working right mm, yeah i was helping my stepdad with uh his computer oh that's right yeah the handyman so fun stuff so you know just to just to run through matt's quickly matt's top catchers were adley rushman will smith rel muto sean murphy alejandro kirk William Contreras, Cal Raleigh, Francisco Alvarez, Jonah Heim, and Tyler Stevenson. One thing I'm going to ask you, why did I get crucified for not having Francisco Alvarez on my top 10? Well, it is I a think Mets it's, podcast. <laughs> yeah, it is a Mets podcast, but I, I want to be as unbiased as possible. Yeah. And I also, but, you know, as I said on the podcast last week, Alvarez was my 11th. Yaner Diaz mm-hmm. just came in above him. And the only reason why is because Diaz, he can hit. He can also defend very well. Alvarez has a ton of pop, but he showed he showed holes in his swing, ended up with, what, a 209 batting average. Um, mm-hmm. And really, his framing what was what is what was incredible last year aside from that you know his defense still could use improvement so i just felt like in the moment alvarez was was on the outside looking in but then you know i i got you know i I did put pete alonzo fifth as my first baseman people got on me about that again saying vladimir guerrero was wasn't better than alonzo so i guess i am the one um rob was talking last week how people got on him last year it looks like i'm the one this year but 
uh, Matt's list, which somebody commented on our Instagram post saying that Matt's list was the only one that made sense, uh, was Matt's list was Freddie. Yeah, it was Freddie Freeman, Matt Olson, Bryce Harper, Pete Alonzo, Paul Goldschmidt, Vladdy, Spencer Torkelson, Nathaniel Lowe, Tristan Casas, and Christian Walker. Yeah. The one thing people didn't like that you and I did, though, is they didn't like that we put Harper third. Yeah, but when he's healthy, he's 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 good. He's I mean, really good. I mean, he's one of the best player. He's one of the best players in the game. Uh, obviously he's only played like a quarter of a season at first base in his career, Mm -hmm. but players make position, position changes and make, for example, you know, if Fernando Tatis wasn't suspended going into this season, he would have ranked within my top three right fielders or top five right fielders for last year, even though he didn't, you know, play right field. So I don't know. I, I think that Harper, um, you know, belongs in the top three. So you and I. You and I agreed with that. Um, Bryce is a dog. Bryce is a dog. You know the one, the one you know, you know unanimous thing is for both catcher and uh, first base. You, myself, and uh, Rob all agreed that uh, Adley Rushman and Freddie Freeman were the top dogs going into um, the year at those respective positions. So, um, with that being said, it's time to dish out our top ten second baseman. Uh, Matt, right. do you want to take the wheel or should I? I'll go, I'll go through mine. All right. Go ahead. Rick. All right. Start at 10. Start at 10. All right. I'll start at 10. I'll go backwards. Uh, so at 10, I put Bryson Stott from Philly. Mm-hmm. Nine, I went with a former. That's his walk up song. Yeah. <laughs> Number nine, I went with a former Met and Andres Jimenez. Uh, seven, I went with Cattell Marte. Or eight. Six, is, Glaber is... Torres. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait. Yeah, Bryson Stott, followed by who? Jimenez. Jimenez, followed by? Cattell Marte. So that's eight. Okay. Step, seven Gla- is who? Gla- Glaber Torres. Okay, so now we're up to six. Uh, Luis Arise. Okay. I love I love him, bro. He's a fucking hit machine. He's, and yeah. Miami is so stupid, they'll probably trade him. <laughs> Um, and then and I got Hassan Kim from the Padres, Nico Horner from the Cubs, uh, Marcus Simeon, uh, Ozzy Albies, and Jose Altuve is number one. Jose Altuve is number one. Wow, you're you're missing you're missing a big guy there. Who am I missing? I didn't even bring it up to you before we hopped on here. Mookie Betts. Shit, bro. I was gonna save him for the outfield segment. I didn't know that he was full time second base, or else. Here we go. Else... This is why we do these lists. Yeah. So who's he would be? Fucking Bryson Stott's gonna get pushed out, and Mookie's gonna go. Mookie's gonna be one. Mookie's one. Okay. Yeah, Mookie would be one. Okay. All right. So on my end here. Somebody that I left out that I recognize when you're talking was Nico Horner. Now, yeah. Nico Horner is not as big of a name as Mookie Betts, so I'm not going to go ahead and alter my list. I'm just going to take it as it comes. You know, if people want to criticize me. Um, at 10, I have Bryson Stott, um, who you just removed. At 9, I'm going to be a homer here for the first time on, on the show. I'm going to put Jeff McNeil at 9. Um, Get the fuck out of here. No, 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 no. The reason being, the reason being, you're going to tell me that he officially drops out of the top 10 second baseman after one down year when he ended up with a 270 batting average? I'd like to hope not. You know what I mean? So, so I, I, to me, I'm expecting a bounce back from McNeil and I think that he'll be a top tech 10 second baseman going into 2025. So for me, when I'm putting these projections, these lists together, I'm looking for who I think is going to perform the best that year. So, you know, yeah. whatever. Kill me if you want. McNeil's my ninth. Uh, eighth, Andres Menez. Seventh, I have Hassan Kim. Okay. Six, I have Luis Arise. Five, 
I have Ozzy Albies. Four, I have Cattell Marte. Three, I have Jose Altuve. Two, I have Marcus Simeon. And one, I have Mookie Betts. It's a good list. There it is. You know, I... Very, very Cattell, solid. Yeah, I flip-flopped a little bit with Cattell Marte and Ozzy Albies, but mm -hmm. to me, Cattell Marte just offers a lot more. I showed it a ton in the postseason, so... Yeah. Um and then when we, when we go to short stops, um I'll take I'll take the wheel on this one. Uh my top 10 short stops going into 2024 at number 10, I have JP Crawford of the Seattle Mariners. I was I was very much debating about having him in my top 10. He's been playing well. Dude, he had a great year last year. I mean, the question is will he replicate what he did in 2023? That's the that's the question mark, but it's been two consistent seasons in a row. So he makes my top 10 at nine. I have Willie Adamas uh, from the Milwaukee Brewers at eight. What a slide. What a slide. But Carlos Correa, the Minnesota Twins. Good thing we didn't sign him last year. At seven, Bo Bichette of the Toronto Blue Jays. At yep. six, I have Dansby Swanson of the Cubs. Five, I have Xander Bogart of the Padres. Four, I have Bobby Witt Jr. of the Royals who just got that massive $288 million contract extension. At three, I have Trey Turner of the Phillies. Drum roll, please. Here we go. At two, I have Corey Seager of the Rangers, okay? okay. And at one, Francisco Lindor is your number All one right. shortstop going into 2024. And I'll give it to you like this, okay? Seeger, what an incredible year he had last year. He was hurt for a large majority of the beginning of uh, the beginning of the year. If he was eligible, he would have, um, you know, at one point been the batting champ or batting title leader. And when you look at the overall game in and of itself, uh, Francisco Lindor is the superior defender. Um, you know, he doesn't hit for the average like Seeger does, but you mm -hmm. know they. They both hit for power. They both get on base at a similar clip. Lindor runs more. And you look at the wars from last year. War doesn't lie. Lindor posted a six war. Corey Seager, 4.8. So, yeah. Lindor, my number one shortstop. All right. Well, well let's, let me let these rip. My one and two bars are flipped. Okay. All right. Ten, I have Swanson, Dansby Swanson from the Cubs. Wow. Nine, yeah, nine, I have Carlos Correa. I have some young guys in here that are going to be good curveballs. Good. Uh, eight, I have Xander Bogarts from mm -hmm. the Padres. Seven, C.J. Abrams from the he Washington was, Nationals. He, he was my 11th. Dude, I, I think he's going to make an even bigger jump than last year. He's going to be good. He's a star. Um, above him at six, I have Ellie De La Cruz. There's a curveball. Um, okay. And that's it. Yeah, there's my curveball. Five, I have Bo Bichette. Four, Trey Turner. Uh, three, Bobby Witt Jr. And this is where we flipped. I went. Lindor at two, Seeger at one. I think it's very much one A, one B though. I agree. I agree. Like it, it they both kind of have different play styles. So it's like I don't know. Absolutely. Both short stops are fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I think you're gonna see most mainstream lists have Seeger listed as one and Lindor too. I think a big majority of it is the fact that you know, obviously, uh, you know, no discredit to Seeker's 2023. It was remarkable mm -hmm. MVP candidate, but um, Seeker put on when the lights were on the brightest, you know, and he ended up winning the World Series. He does what he does in the postseason. And, um, you know, I think that's why you're going to see Seeker atop many lists. But it, we also flip flop three, four, right? You had uh, you had Trey Turner four, Wit three. Yep. Yeah. So I had Wit four and Trey Turner three. These are good. These are good because last year, last year, Rob and myself's lists were really similar. And this year, it looks yeah. like we're having a lot of flip flopping. Um, good because it'll be nice to look on this at the end of the year. 
Exactly. Exactly. And then we'll really be able to see who, uh, who nailed it all down, but this is the first, um, these are the first, that's the first position that, uh, someone that we disagreed on the, uh, consensus top short right, stop. That's good. You know, good. That's, discussion. That's good. Yeah. Offer some discussion here in what's been a quiet winter. Um, so, yeah. With that, Matty, uh, anything else as we, you know, are approaching spring training here, awaiting potentially a JD Martinez acquisition, you know, uh, anything else we want to add here? I mean, yeah, if if uh, everybody is getting gearing up for spring training games, uh, getting back to City Field, be sure to use our C key code, Cup of Mets, get your twenty dollars off, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm ready for this to start. Baseball season to start up, football to end. It's always sad, but uh, it's bittersweet seeing baseball start again. And uh, I don't know, I'm just excited for the hot stove to end. Hell yeah. Yeah. These are, you know, we can only talk about um, potential moves for so long. And we've been doing it since the beginning of November. And I think the recognition set in with all of us mm-hmm. towards like the end of December that it was going to be like, oh gosh, there's not going to be much more brewing. So, um, you know, it's been fun though. And uh, again, we appreciate everyone for uh, tuning in as always. Again, we'll probably have three maybe four more hot stove episodes um you know obviously if the mets do anything big we'll be there or as big as they possibly can we'll be there and then again we'll release next episode we will drop our top third basements and our top dh is heading into the year then we'll head into the outfield we'll go to the mound and uh that'll conclude our top tens for going into 2024 with that being said episode 15 is in the books remember Give us a follow on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok, Rack Cup of Mets. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And lastly, just one final reminder, be sure to use code Cup of Mets to get $20 off of your first purchase on the SeatGeek app. So make sure you download that app. Again, for Matthew DeSantis, Ami and Bosniak, thanks again for joining us. We're almost there, guys. Let's go, Mets. Good night. Have a good weekend, guys. Enjoy the Super Bowl.